Today on the Late Start Racing YouTube channel, we're starting part one of working on my 1970 MGB GT with Grant and Dad. So let's start on the intake and exhaust side. Oh yeah, hold on a second. And today, uh, you will be watching this probably weeks from now, but today is Veterans Day, mm -hmm. and we want to thank Grant for his service. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> and uh, Grant, what, what, what uh, branch of the service were you in? Navy. Navy. What did you do in the Navy? I was a machinist mate on the USS Saratoga. What year? Um, served from 1967 to 1972. Yep. Down in the engine room. That was my job. They basically call it a propulsion engineer. Propulsion engineer. Jet yep. propulsion. No, yep. steam propulsion. Yeah. In this case. Uh -huh. Not jet. Isn't it a show, though? It's not Charlie's show. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And at this point, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. Learned a lot. Yep, learned, learned a lots lot. Of, lots of stories that are really, really meaningful. <clears throat> but to, especially to do with people from all over the world and the United States and stuff. Um, yep. So. Which brings us to also thank you out there to all you other veterans today. Thank you for your service. Uh, we wouldn't be able to be here today um, working on a project like this without you. <laughs> So, thanks. And let's get into it. Yep. So, Brooke, the first thing we're going to need, I believe, the half inch for the intake and exhaust, half inch socket. Yeah. Do you want to do this? Sure. Yes, she does. Yep, that's good. What am I doing? You're going to pull, you're going to pull uh, all of these off right here. All of these. The manifold ones. So yep. The, the intake manifold is held on by these two and these two. Yep. And which also helps hold the exhaust manifold on, but the exhaust manifold has two through bolt studs on the outside. Yeah. Where these are shared, these big washers. Yeah, this, these washers are like bridges to hold this whole assembly on. It all comes off together with the exception of the outside ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can hand me that stuff. Uh, might need the two of these. To look at the inside of this, yeah, see what it looks like. Have a, uh, unleaded uh, head. Well, I did, like I say, I didn't really look at this until now, and it does have the plugs, the eighth-inch pipe plugs, in for the small kids. The up, uh, which is everybody took them out. Didn't somebody look at the serial number on this and determine that it was 1970? It is. Yeah, it is. But I thought smog was 73. But that doesesn't mean the head is. It could oh, be a different head, head. Yeah. right? Because right over here, this uh, 18GK WE indicates 7071, and the other engine that came out of the project car that had the problems is in the same. The numbers a little different, but it's the same 7071. It was a break in the middle of the year somewhere, end of the okay. year, beginning of the year. Yeah. Oh, that reminds um, me, Brookie and I. And Grant actually took this engine out of a different car. Jeez, what was that like? Five years ago now. It was back at the old shop. Yeah, that car was a little bit too rusty to work on. Full insert it, picture okay. now of Brookie taking that engine out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was pretty young. Yeah, she was pretty young. young. All right, so that's all our list. Oh, oh, he's loose. He's loose. Yeah, let's pull. Uh, let's pull this vacuum line off here. Probably that vacuum line is still alive. Yeah, we're going to need a tool for that, bro. You could use a screwdriver, but I prefer using the correct tools. Strength and ignorance, like that. Ow! <laughs> we'll pull it off from here, too. Oh, he's got a little forking tool there. Yeah, well, it's an upholstery tool, so yeah. it works good for that All stuff. Right, pull that sucker off. Let's see. Then this will give us our first, uh, this will give us our first look into... Uh, the at least the a so this engine ran uh, ran good too but yeah that's right so this was 
This was the engine that came out of a car that I bought when I was, I think, 13 or 14. Um, and you take that one off, Brooke, with the impact. Okay. It ran the other one we're going to need to... It did run good. So we drove it around the fields, uh, <laughs> starting it here. I remember that. that put some sauce on it. Yeah, you can. I should have done that the other day. Well, I mean, honestly, it'll be, it, it won't be she got it. Oh, yeah, this is coming out. Oh, the stud's coming, too. Yeah, she yep. give it too many dugga duggas there. That thing is not... Um, sometimes I'd rather use a wrench because you can feel what's going on before you snap it off. I'm not fond of snapping bolts off into heads. You want to hang on to this? Oh. Do I get it? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, I'll take this. You can take that and set it over there with the rest of the bolts stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Can I take this off? Uh, yep, go ahead. Yeah. I have all these gaskets and all this stuff of this. All we, do is go all we gotta do is go through the uh, uh, NOS MG collection. Nasty. Throw that right in the trash. Okay. Yep, put that right over there. Um, we might as well go right to here. Half Some inch again, but we'll take staff. off the lifter chamber covers. What? Yeah, over. Yeah, you can go on that side or whatever. Yep. I'm going to hang on to it and pop this off. This, this is where the lifters are. Ooh, that was a toughie, wasn't it? Here, give me that bolt. Now Ooh. we're going to get into the greasy, greasy, slimy stuff. That stuff was pretty. So, what are these? Those are the push rods. So, the cam, so on this engine, so this is a push rod engine, um, which a lot, you know, modern four cylinders are almost always overhead cam because they're more efficient. But this being a push rod engine, the camshaft is down in the block right here. You can see yep. the end of the camshaft right here, which is, a, this is an interesting engine because it has that engine plate on the back, which actually seals this off and has the rear main seal in it, which is, yeah. I don't know of any other engines like that, but yeah. obviously I don't know everything. So, um, but the timing set is right here. The cam gear and the cam chain is in there. The camshaft goes in here with the bumps. Lifter yeah. setting on the cam, push rod, push rod pushes on the rocker, which then opens the valves. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and get that. And each one of these is access to the push rod. All right, I'm going to have to get something to pry that off. Yeah, it is a lot easier for me to get the tools, Brooke, because... Yeah. There it is. Mm. Okay, so the lifters are right there. So each one of those is the lifter, and this is the this is the push rod. So like that one right there is on the base circle. So that one that valve is not open. These ones that don't move unless they're stuck are ones that there's actually tend pressure on the yep. valve to be open. Uh, let's spin it around. We'll take everything off this side because we're pretty much done over there. Just so everyone can see what we're doing, I'm going to take this and turn it right around like this. like that now I believe uh, three-quarter inch right here I'll get I'll get the, uh, like I said I'll get the tools be much easier try that out. that's an oil filter adapter where am I going we're gonna go right here the oil filter like this used to be a canister down here yeah but then they changed it to this because it was a lot easier for them to for service wise Yep, you got it. What's an, oh, oh, oh! We're gonna make a mess. Nice clean block. Oh well, put this down here because that's what it's there for. It's kind of gooey, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's marvelous. Some gooey stuff. Been in there a while, considering it hasn't been on the road since who knows. She's when. leaking. Lincoln. Leaking. We're going to pull the dipstick. 
Jimmy. That's a Jimmy Dip steak. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do is half inch, take out these two bolts here. Take the, uh, this is the oil pressure sending unit, which goes down onto here like this. Cause, um, right this, here? Yep, take those two out right there. Oh. Yep, well, you know, every, everything's fine thread, which makes it come apart. Uh, pretty good. Yep. Itty bitty baby screw. Yeah, little short ones. And go ahead, Mom. Let's take this bracket off. We don't need that on there for the time being. That's the back side. Of, that's the back side of the alternator support. Yep. Uh, now we need seven sixteenths to get the distributor out. You're gonna have to wrench that out. I'll give you the easy way to go here. Seven sixteenths with a ratchet. Where am I going? Right down in here. Yeah, we're gonna pull the distributor out. Oh, it's already loose. So you're going the wrong way. Yep, there you go. Did you say there you go? I did, yeah. <laughs> we were in, uh, in step. <laughs> and, uh, what is that thing where you're taking out, Brucky? What is it? Yeah, what's this thing? That's a scary thing. A scary thing. <laughs> yeah, let me... Uh, it's I, really scary. Why is it scary? It's, I don't know. It just looks like a monster that you'd see on TV. It's know. a distributor. Yeah, it distributes the... Oil. Uh, no. no. Yes. The spark to each spark, spark. plug. Yep. I was, that so was my next guess. If you, so under here, each one of the spark plug wires, so this would be, this would be where the coil wire comes in. That's where the power comes from the coil. Yep. And then each one of these here would represent one of the spark plugs. Yep. And as the engine turns, this is geared into, in this case, is this in the back side drive, of the camshaft? I uh, believe, yeah, driven off okay, the camshaft. Driven off the camshaft, spins this thing. So you've got the you've got the rotor and then the rotor button. That button right there rides on the top of the rotor to transmit the power from the coil to the rotor button to the to the rotor and then the rotor as it goes past these posts in here yep. it actually makes continuity we know about continuity oh yeah we do yeah, it makes continuity uh maybe we'll insert a funny video here yeah uh, like you would like hold like two ends and like squeeze it mm-hmm is this okay yeah yep and squeeze it t t t tight together mm -hmm. and then the water would start flowing to where it's supposed to be mm -hmm. and it would stop in its tracks right but if you didn't have it squeezed what would happen it would just flow from one end to the other which means it has continuity boom can you say can you say uh you just explained continuity at eight years old i just Explain continuity at eight years old. That's what I do. Bye bye. Um, makes continuity and then sends the power to the plug to light it off. Gotcha. And then this unit here is called a vacuum advance. So depending on the load on the engine, you have a different amount of vacuum in the intake manifold, which will tell this to advance the timing of retard. And this is a point system. So the power actually runs on a cam here. Um, there's a cam, so you can see the crustiness coming off there. So there's a cam on the distributor which opens and closes, which this is like a switch. So it's like turning the light on and off to yeah. let the power go through. Yeah. All of this, we don't need because we're gonna do fuel injection. And we're so gonna we can do, take that off. We're gonna take this off and we won't be putting it back on. Although uh, I am unfamiliar, I don't know about you, Grandpa, about if this drives like the oil pump or anything. We'll have to find out we'll because find out, my yeah. memory. Um... We may have to put a dummy, uh, a dummy distributor back in here because this a lot of times will also the the on a lot of at least V eight 
uh, American Engines, the, the the distributor, also drives the oil pump for the yeah. engine. So you have to have a dummy system in there. We'll see it when we. And I, I to be honest with you, I cannot remember. It's know, been I, it's been a while. I've never had one apart yeah. myself. Switching so, battle. So, yeah. You are the resident expert. Yeah, but you know, it's it's bec I've uh, been so into so many different engines that I don't remember everything. Yeah. I think it's an age thing, possibly. Oh. No, you're going to need that little ratchet one the again. ratchet? This thing? Yeah, yeah, just like you did the f on the first. We've got to get that out of there, so. Now, let's see what we can use. Probably. What's this thing? That was the clip that held the distributor cap on. Gotcha. So that's got a tensioning device. Does that, are you supposed to loosen, see how no, it's pinched? I don't think so. Oh, you just pinch it on. You pinch it on the this is after you get close. <coughs> right, right. You have to yeah. get your timing close, and then let's see if we can try rotating it. And maybe let's break that loose and take the. Um, where's that? Where's that wrench you just had? The little. The one, one that you just had in your hand. Oh. Oh, that's it. Seven sixteenths. I think so. Yeah, that's it. Let's uh, see if we can back this off and take the distributor out. The other way, like I said, it's been a while, so. Which is the reason why I really was kind of enthusiastic about getting into this because it's been such a long time. The last engine I was in, what? that moves. See, it's just stuck in the opening, that's all. Uh, it was back in 1973. And the other one was the TC, the 1200 on the TC in the other room. Gotcha. And that's as close as I've got since then. There we go. There. Oh, there we go. So that's drip. Oh, so that must have a drive. And there's a drive there's coming. A drive yep. in there that comes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> So there is a drive in there, Brucky. It's just yep. um, so maybe it just you can block that off. We'll find out. Yeah. I'll we'll leave those there. Um, I think we're down to if you want, Brooke, take the impact and a seven sixteenth socket and take the fan off and the water pump. Those oh, and those. So, Let's get these right out here where we can I believe that is. Try it. We must have bent yep. that when you were... Uh, uh, somewhere along the line, that did get bent. Of all the times that we've probably moved this thing around, the journey up here... From yesteryear. See, I'm good for something. Look at parts bin. Yep, now you can take off. That. This pulley comes off. It does? Okay. Yeah, you can tap that pulley off. And then you're going to be able to get at the water pump so it bolts. Has, uh, what you call a location fit on here. So it just fits along this to keep it centered. So uh -huh. it wobble. So what happens though, when they're on there for a while, the, any bit of corrosion gets it tight. So if you get a dead blow hammer, uh, next, one. next one, if you get this dead blow here and you bonk it. Bonk which part? So I would bonk it like here. Like this way? Um, Kind of sideways a bit. Like yeah. that. Yep. We don't care if the, it messes up the water pump. Okay, you got to bonk it a couple times, yeah. A couple times. Oh, no, that gave it loose, and then Grant's going to do the wiggle job there. Tell me to do it again. Give me. Uh, Why don't you grab hold of that and wiggle it off? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Or here's a better way. Yeah. If, oh. No, you wiggle back and forth. Yeah, there you go. It's got pain wiggle, on wiggle, it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That's not doing nothing. Okay, go over on this side over here and tap right here when I pry over here. Tap right? where? Tap right here if you can get I it can't. in. Yeah, you can get the uh, half inch socket. We'll remove the water pump. There it is. It's got some. Uh, Got some schmutz there behind it, yeah. but there's another way to that. that back when they made like stuff, quarter inch thick in I know yeah. quality and stuff one, back two, then. Three. Yep, yep. And then that's that it. Be held on with a gasket, so you'll bonk that and get that off too. You might need your extension, or you will need your extension. You're gonna round heads. Yeah. yeah. Here you go. Here you go. And then. Mm 
Just let it eat. No, no, no. Go, go, go. You want me to keep going? Yeah. Pull trigger. Pull trigger. Fuck. See? Okay. It is good. It is good to be cautious. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, feel it out, but. Yep. Everything on this is is fine thread. So it like it's got blue silicone on the end of the bolts, which means the water pump somewhere along the line. So now you need your bonk and hammer. Get your bonk and you hammer. Got, get your dead ball and you just. Yep. Just tap the ear on this side. There. We're going to replace Where? it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Side, you'll tap that while holding it with the other hand. So hold it. Grab it here with this hand. Yep. And then whack it from the back. You know. I, hey. They still cool on. Oh, there's lots of coolant. There. Yeah, we're gonna have to turn it upside down once we get the head off and drain of it. Coolant in there. Boy, it's kind of. Yeah, that's my present. It's, it's, you know, there's a little barnacle on there. Yep. It's not bad though. It's just What's right, a barnacle? It's just right up near the. Ew! Ew! Why are you touching it? Well, so like the the sides of the cylinders look really good though. Cause like, so if like yeah. this was all corroded in here, this thing would, wouldn't uh, cool yeah. very well because it would create a layer between the coolant and the cast iron, but the cast iron is nice and clean. So it'll stay <laughs> efficient. Um, let's go for the, uh, just to clear it. No, let's, just, we'll leave, leave this on for time, let, but let's pull the valve cover at Brooks. So half inch, we'll take it. This is the heater tube. This supplies your heat, heater core going into the car. So just right here in here? Yep. Yep. Sometimes I think these are a little bit almost like we should use a, a metric socket. Hang on a minute, Brooke. What's up? Let's try something here so we don't... It, granted, they are rusty and the socket's going to fit kind of tight, right. but those sockets are worn and it's still tight. So, time, yeah. so um, let's try something here. Let's try a 13 and see if it makes it easier. Nah. So 13 is bigger than half because half, uh, right. one inch is 25.4 millimeters, which means it's 12. No, you're going to have to stay with that. It's 12.7 <clears throat> millimeters is a half inch. Um, so, thir so 13 is actually bigger. It was just a chance. It's just the rust on everything that creates a problem. That's the tube. Now you got to go to a bigger one. Yeah. Am I going to this? No, that's too big. Mm, that's, five uh, yeah. oh, that's too small. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably five eighths. Or eleven sixteenths. So do you think this one? Next one up from nine sixteenths will be five eighths. Yeah, you can take those right out of that. There five you go. It is. Little, little nice working on something that has regular Oop. or mixed. Yep. <laughs> which is usually Yep. Okay. Both holding the valve cover on. Now you can take now your. You get out your bonk yeah. hammer again. Yeah, hold just, on to the tube. Just tap it a little bit little right pressure. here. Pull, you you want to hold on to the tube? Yep. So I just bonk it yep, like just this. Gentle. Yeah. Just you don't gentle like. Yep. There you go. That's bonk. it. Just like that. Bonk and hammer. Ooh, that doesn't look too bad. Not too bad. So, I mean, you just you have the you have the ability to do it. Get a screwdriver, bro. Yep. So you get a, a um, each one of these. Some of these we don't have to touch. That one we do. That one we do. Is this okay? Uh, yep. Yeah, that'll be fine. So he's undoing the lock nut, so then you can unscrew the adjuster. So just. Yeah, only the ones that are tight. Go ahead. So this one. I don't think I've loosened that one. Hang on a minute. That one has no pressure on it. No, there's no pressure on that one. This one doesn't. This one doesn't. This one doesn't. That one does right there. So that one yep. right there. You, you can, can see this out. one is down, which means the lobe of the cam is... Yeah, so all you're going to do is back that off until this wobbles. So it's a good lesson for her, too, to yeah. what's going on. So. Yeah, so those are adjusters, which... Um, and a lot of this stuff is, you know, Oof. you're gonna you're gonna pick this up as you go. You don't again, you know, you yeah. don't have to remember everything first go. But those are 
lash it does. You may not get all the lash out nope. of it, but at least you'll take a lot of pressure off from uh, from it. It probably would be fine, like Grant said, to just take it off. But yeah, loosen this one up too, and I think we'll be okay. But so you have lash <coughs> in the valve train, so when the engine heats up, it doesn't hang a valve open. So you have you have lash, which is this movement when the engine's cold, so that the valve is all the way seated and seals. And then when the engine heats up, everything grows. A Just bit, go until it stops. And you'll need that gap. Yeah. So. Now we take the half inch and take these four out here. So one, two, three, four. Or no, one, two, one, two three, three, four. four. Yep. Yeah, the other ones will be nice. Yep. Oops. Sorry. See, the thing is you want to watch out for is when you're doing stuff like this, especially when you go to put it back together, that you don't lose a washer, lock washer, flat washer, back down inside the engine because then you'll, have to, in the then you'll have to take it all apart again. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Like that. Don't want to do that. <laughs> That's very important. Because <laughs> that going through the engine is not a good thing. Yeah, the best thing to do is stop prematurely. You get the keeper? Yep. Now you can get a... I don't know what this guy is here. He's a head bolt, right? I'm guessing uh, yes, bolt, because, uh, see? So you'll need a half inch to take that out. Okay. Uh, so you might yep. zip him out and then start on your 916s. Yep. And then do you think we should take this off in a pattern? Uh, I would start on the outsides and so work to, your way to the center. The, the, this one, this one. This one, this one, this one, this one. So these are also head bolts. Oh. So you're gonna go like here, there, 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 you know, back and forth. Here, yep. here, there, there. Mm -hmm. Here. Yep. Here. Yep. Here, here. Yep. Here, here. Winner. Here. And that'd be the last one. Here, here. Oh, oh. well, yep. at least it didn't go anywhere else. <laughs> Well, they stuck in it earlier. Like when you're doing that main fault, it actually got stuck in there. So yeah, you're thinking that that's what's gonna happen. Oh, you got the whole stud that time. So this head's already studded. This is that a good one? Is that bad? Or? No, that's fine. That's and then I go here, right? Back he to the other side. I already did that, didn't I? No, you only took. So this is this is a nut. Um, this is a double-ended nut deal. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this one. It's an adapter, it's if an you adapter. will. Yeah. So. Yep. What? So it's got one, it's got 916 fine thread in the bottom, and it's got um, three half inch fine, yeah. fine in the And bottom. then this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah get your washer. Well, maybe not. Leave the and washer there. And then this one, this one. That one. This yep. one. Yeah, see, some of them you're not going to get the stud. We'll address that later. Oh, got it. Yeah. What's he doing? We're pausing. Pausing. This will be interesting. Get down in the head part. Get in there. So this is the serial number right here, bro. The one stamped, yeah. Yep. I'll show you something. We'll take we'll take a second here when we start up again. I'll show you. Okay. We're gonna do a quick uh, lesson serial in number. numbers. Okay. Yep. Check the serial number right here. Yep. Oh, if you look at this, hold up. Um, I think. See, that's the number 18 GK dash W E H. Okay. Right. And if you come over here, Brooke, yeah. that's the number we're working with. This is the number of the other engine. You say 18GKWE. Maybe I'm on the wrong page here. Uh, GK, which is this one right here. The WE, we don't need that. If you go over there, see it says type engine 1970, 71. 
This is the other engine, 18V584Z. That's that one. Uh, that one's uh, 71, 72, so they're very close. This, this is, for all practical purposes, in, in the same year or within six months, let's say. So that I'm back to not not oh. not that it's so critical so that you've got to have the one, exact that year. One, that one, that one, this one. It's not like we're doing a restoration. We're building a land speed car. A three season land speed car. Three season. Okay, now this one. Yeah. See how that See, popped that up? Pressure on it. That's what yep. about. Now, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, oh, take the rocker hurt. arm ones yep. off. Just, just no, spin them right off. Yep. 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 See the pressure coming out. I think it, it would have been pretty gnarly. A stud came out. Too many hands. Well, that's all. So those folks. Uh, those folks out in Camden that had that uh, that had that Lime Rock car, yep. the Lime Rock B, they had an interesting conversion I'd seen on uh, on the internet where they use I think it's LS7 now this rockers. One? There's a there's an adapter to use a roller rocker from a Chevrolet V8. A new really? Chevy V8, yeah. Yeah. Just, which is something we could do with this. Yeah, so if you'd have we a can. Roller tip rocker instead. Uh, I don't know how they do the uh, the lash adjustment though. Um, unless it, oh, I think it's in the post. The adapter, the the adjustments in the post. But I don't know. So how about this? Oh yeah, you missed one. That's where you got out of sync. No, we didn't yeah, talk about that, that right one. There. You got that guy right there. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. There you go. And you've also got, that's why I was talking about taking the neck off. Is because that actually a fastener that goes down through the head? Does it? It looks like... No, I think that's... Um, I that's see, the last I one? I see a bump down in... Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. So what that. we're going to do now, Brooke... Yeah, let me just assembly. wipe my hand real quick. Yeah, well, when you come back around here... Yeah, sorry. So we're just going to take this and slide this up, and that's your rocker assembly. We're going to take that and... And then these are the push rods. Yeah. So now, how we laid that rocker assembly over there, you want to grab each one of these push rods and lay them in line with each rocker arm. Um, so Grant just spun that around, so it's go over there, spin that back around so it faces the opposite way. What do you mean? Spin this around like this. So it goes. Yep, spin that around like that. Yep. And then uh, take a marker. Like that. And then, um, well, okay. This so, is the, this is the. So what I was going to do is. Front? Yeah. So right front on the cardboard right here. Yeah, I'll put it right here. Oh, you're right. I there can't. is nothing on that marker. I, just have a <laughs> I keep the dried up ones. They, 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 they to, to aggravate They're your day. All, silver. all right, there you go. Take a silver one. Yeah, just put F right here. Might actually work on. Yep. Yep. Put okay. An arrow. Put an arrow on there too. To go visual. like very visual, pointed this way. For yeah. Front. This yep. way. Yep. Like yep. arrow yep. this way. Absolutely. All right, yep. so Grant got you a tool holder, so you can put each push rod in in the hole you that got, corresponds with the rod. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got exactly so start eight from there. the back. Grab one push rod. At this a time. one. Yep. yep. Grab that one and put it with the back rocker. Something fell off of it. The lifter dropped off the ball. Right. Don't right, go so back into play. Where? Yeah. Just stick it in the hole this right side. here. Yep. That's the one it goes with. So you have to keep these matched. If we're gonna if we're gonna install these parts back in this engine, they've already worn into each yeah. other. They've self Oh, did the lifter actually pop okay. Yeah, I will got out. I will help. Sorry. Yeah. No, we'll take fine. those and set and them right that, alongside. This one goes here. Is that number We'll leave them in there. Yeah, now. for we'll now. Does this one go yep. here now? Yes. Yep. Yep. And it just yep. keeps just going, keeps going like that. Yep. Yep. I'll hold the lifter while you know, the push rod. There you go. It, 
it wouldn't make a huge difference, but the main thing you like to keep things uh, to where they came out is if there's an issue with something, at least you'll know what went with Other what that, to find track. the issue. So when we, if, there, if we find that this engine has some weird wear, or just wear, because it's, it's, right. it's a 1960 it's whatever engine, yep. uh, if we just throw all the parts in a bin, we can't really go back and understand. Yeah, diagnose if, if, there, if we find a problem to find out uh, if we need to dig further, let's say. And there you go. And we are ready to... We should probably pull those lifters before we forget and then roll the engine over and dump them out. So, yep. Rookie, you just need a... Actually, yep. And pull each lifter. Just stick the magnet on top of the lifter. Like this way? Right? Yep. yep. And pull each one. Yep, Ian, we're going to want to grab it as you pull it up out. It. Okay. So you get it, and then... Yeah, just go. like that. And set that right in front of, right on top of the hole. This is the back. Yeah, just set it right there. Yep. Do that with the Yeah, you slide. can actually, we'll just set it in there like that so it doesn't tip over. We'll use that for a bunch of stuff. I had that out here the other day, and I said, hey, we could use that for push rods. No, that's great. Push rods. Yeah. yeah. Usually yep. the box, and you just... Keep, you take a box and you stab them through the side of the box. Keep yeah, it but that right there, uh, as long as you don't yeah, just set it. There you go. Knowing it's, uh, yeah. Um, I did turn this over all the way, by the way. You did? Yeah. Well, yeah. No after issues. That's, after we left the sauce in it there. <coughs> yeah. I mean, moisture, because this was stored out in the box trailer. Always undercover. Undercover, but in the box. In the box so, trailer. You know, right. I mean, it gets pretty humid in Maine yeah. in the winter. In, yeah. In the, but in the, I, that in the inside there was so dry. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it'll be just fine. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. They're, so they're, they are. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got. Got oil. We started to come apart here. See this right here? Oh, is that mushroom? And this is flanged. Yeah, she's got a sharp edge on it, so it's going to need. Well, we don't. Oh, 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 oh. yep. Yeah. Let me put a rag on that. We don't want to walk in there. That's my bad. Ooh, that one is. They're, they're not good. No. I. We're going to be in this in bales. Well, no, here's the thing. You might. Grind them and then take the lash. Um, once they're re oh, we'll have to see what the condition is, but to check the installed height, mm -hmm. this may be want to be ground like we did on the 944. Yeah. Because they were too long and your duration has changed then. Yeah. Um, oh, that was the thing about the GM rockers. You can put a higher ratio rocker on it to get more duration out of a factory yeah. game. That was like one of those, um, easy, um, Oh. Performance modification. That one just. Oh, yeah, it's floating, gonna be... around on a, floating around on a little bit of oil there. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. That's why the cardboard's here, Brooke. Yeah. Because I don't like the oil on my bench. All right. So I think Mr. this is. Mr. Fussy uh, Gramp. This is the moment. <laughs> yeah, we got to take the head off, Brooke. This is, uh, yeah, yeah, this so is a big moment. Pry bar. Um, and we'll leave the gooseneck and stuff. I think probably uh, yeah, right in there. here, I'd say. Um, screwdriver, Brooke, and just go right in here and just... Oh, it's already loose. It's already loose. <laughs> Shall we lift it? You want to pick the head off the ground? Yeah, you want to grab that, that end? Yep. Making sure there's no washes left on here anyway. Okay, Head let's off. go. And what we're going to do, oops, get it. Okay. I'm going to take this and we're going to. Turn it around and see what it looks like. Well, there's. It smells like. no ridge, seemingly. Well, no, that one's got a ridge. This is your head. Let's take a look at the head gasket. Um, it's old. I mean, it's Flip probably it over been on there. It don't look like it's... It doesn't look like... So at Grandpa and Dad are looking for... We're looking for any indication that the head gasket was uh, leaking between cylinders yeah. or between... 
So like this is this is a coolant port, this bigger one that's a coolant port, and then these smaller ones would be um, either coolant or oil. I'm not sure which how the oiling system works on this exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. And the head gasket looks good. Yeah. There is I'm gonna definitely keep, some it, carbon on the top of the cylinder. But there is a ridge on this There's one. A ridge. Not much. So we'll find out there. what the So the ridge so what the ridge is is the when we pull the pistons you'll see the top ring the ridge is at the point where the top ring when the piston comes up it stops and then goes back down the ridge indicates where in the bore the bore has grown has gotten bigger from having the rings and the piston go up and down and you can feel the ridge with your fingernail at the top where the ring stops every time it returns. Gotcha. But some of it's carbon though, which carbon is just from being fouled up, which the plugs that came out of this thing were ugly. So, I mean, all this, that's carbon. That's, that's uh, nasty. That is un completely burnt fuel and if this thing has any blow by, so engine oil, vapor, and stuff that comes from the crankcase up in there, that gets burned. Gotcha. It turns into that smooth. All right, so cylinder head, what do we. Uh, it's uh, carmined up pretty good, but it's the big valve. It's not the small valve. Uh, the only one questionable is. But you can't tell. It's it's so carboned up, but it is pretty and little I, carbon. Yeah, and it's not an unleaded head. And we wanted leaded or not? We wanted an unleaded head. So the thing is, these uh, when these cars were new, uh, gasoline had lead in it, mm -hmm. which lead is a very toxic mm -hmm. uh, element or material. Yeah, it's an element. Uh, and lead is a great lubricant. Yeah. Mm. So there was lead in the gasoline, and it would lubricate the um, it would lubricate the valve uh, stems and other things. Anything that came in contact with gas is a better lubricant. So what happens now is unleaded gas. They took the lead out to make the gasoline not as bad. Mm -hmm. um, you'll actually eat the seats up in these things. Okay. Um, so you have to put a hardened steel seat in it because the seat is actually just the cast material that the head is. So this is a good thing. No, this is not good. Without this is not good. Not, not good to update it. As far as updating, you, you've got to make changes to... So this is leaded. We have... wanted unleaded. Right. That, yeah. That so is what, what would okay. happen is people would have, may have rebuilt the head and they would have opted for an unleaded seat package in it, which we will just now have to do or find okay. a head that actually has unleaded seats. Yeah. Nice. Let's... Um, That's handy. I just wanted to go all the way down... They look pretty nice. They're very shiny. They are. In other words... Well, like there's no hatch left like right there. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Understandable, but... These these engines, I've seen them with a couple hundred thousand on them. Uh, the ones that people took care of, you know. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how it uh, measures out. To see if it is... Uh, stock bore to put stock piston stock rings yeah, back in see if we can actually just hone it. with just a hone right hone it to put some rings in it yep so re-ring it re-bearing it uh re-gasket it let's um this this um oh you remember the little yeah you're gonna need a, a hammer and a chisel like you had before yeah, this so what are we same. taking off we're gonna pull the front uh pulley off in this Timing chain cover. Okay. But see, we got one of those. Oh, you got to hit it off. I need a punch. Oh, yes. You need your chisel. 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 Whatever there. they're called. And after that, we're going to take this off. All right. We'll see. Yeah, time okay. set. Yep. Knock that back. I'll do the impact on that because the impact we're going to use is pretty heavy. She can handle that. Okay. I'll get it out and get it ready. We can roll right along, yeah. Yeah, bro. One second. Take this and knock it back. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm all good. We'll put a new one on it anyway, so it don't yeah, matter. I think that's all set, right? Yeah. Oh, is that painted red? Oh, yeah. it must have been when they did a paint job on the car. They had the grill and the... 
I don't think so. <laughs> no? Well, why is it red? Probably just an original. I think it's original. Oh, they just got another plate on the front. They did some interesting, like, plate stuff on the front yeah. of the back. I'm gonna do this. Yep, you're gonna do this. Oh, that. yeah, you, uh, Forrest says you are. Yep. I am. You want some gloves on? No. Okay, go ahead. Alright, you pull it in Yeah, air. you gotta put air oh. in. Yeah. It, it's got a Why lot of. Safety toes. <laughs> I didn't drop it on my toe. It was close. Yeah, you don't wanna hit your it toe with that. I don't know if I should be doing this, you guys. You should, you should. Just put the air hose on it and let it eat. Let it cook. Wait, I have to push down and then do yep. it, right? Jump, jump I don't want to do it. Go for it. Ah, ah. Let, go. Let go of the collar. Don't hit the wall. There you go. Yep. Don't pull the trigger it. without yeah, it being on there. No, I'm not doing anything. Oh. Put it on there. Yep. What? I'm not. Oh, God, I'm scared. Yep. Yep. No. Let her eat? Yep, go for it. Yep. And then do, when do I do it till? Just keep so it until it comes look. apart. It should come right off. Done. Uh, you got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you do not want to pull the trigger with something in the socket, or you don't want to pull the trigger at all unless. I don't know how long that is. So that will start whipping around and then go flying off. Yeah. That will come flying. That will come flying off then. It won't be pretty. <laughs> you don't want to do that. This needs to come with a and warning label. Uh, it does. Okay, where is it? It's on the it's on the impact. Where? It will say somewhere on here. Wait, oh sorry. <laughs> um Well usually it says on yeah. here where yeah. protection, where eye, something. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, there's not enough instructions for you, I guess. Yep. Exact Ah! What is that? So now am I taking this off? Pull the the balancer off. So that this is the harmonic balancer, which helps deal with uh, stuff. First and second order vibrations. I think that's what that works. It just makes everything else turn. <laughs> 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 the fan, the water pump. <laughs> well, no, but it's a harmonic balancer. I know. It's got a. Well, is it though? Or is it solid and it just has a groove? There is. I believe there's rubber in between the base and the outer outer pulley. I believe there is. Yeah, there is. And it's cracked. Yeah. So that's yeah. Okay. Now, what size wrench would you say that is? I'm going to say it uh -huh. is 5 eighths. Piece of cake. There we go. That's good. Because pulling on the rubber is not great. Oh, we're up against the. So the rookie, they have. Good. Try to pull that off now. Just pull right straight out with both hands. There's racing versions of what you're holding right there that are made in a way that so right here, this inner piece and this outer piece are only attached with rubber. And there's racing versions of these that. Um, if the rubber fails, they're usually, they're fluid, they have fluid in them instead. It can't come apart because in high RPM, especially in drag racing, standard transmissions where you're changing the RPM mm -hmm. really quickly, this part comes off mm -hmm. and it goes flying through the car and will like kill spectators, yeah. the yeah. other car, you know, stuff like that. A, a good... A good example, which Forrest and I just experienced, with what goes on with this front pulley yeah. is on the 944, we went to Dyno, Forrest made that trigger wheel for the timing, mm -hmm. and that was clamped in there tight with four bolts in between the outside pulley, mm -hmm. or the drive for the alternator, and the main pulley just inside. Even though that was tightened right up, that, that thing slipped yeah, when we had the... And it's because the car was <clears throat> revving really hard and yeah. making a lot of power. 7,000 plus, and it just and shook that thing. Yeah. It loose, which and I was... Come apart. And, and um, Mark down there he said, I've never seen, never seen that happen. And we, I was totally... He probably also had never seen anybody just sandwich the timing in between there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But you know that fit, that fit tight, and I, I was, I was, 
And even when we were trying, we had a, um, we had something and we were trying to move it by hand, we actually had to take a hammer and hit it to make it turn. But yet, it would do it on its own with the vibration at 7,000 RPM and it just, because it retarded the timing and... We almost cut the motor in. Yeah, it was, uh, well, it's been fixed. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Here's going to be your timing chain. Alright, let's take this off. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's... Yep, we're going to take this. There's, nice. your, there's your seal on the crank. Keeps the oil in the oil pan, so to speak. <clears throat> yeah, you can move it. Yeah, it was pretty loose. Oh, there's no oil pressure on the tensioner. Right. There's an oil-fed tensioner on it, yeah. so that's what. That's why rotating it, you know, rotating it by hand, we felt all that slop in the timing set. Do you want me to get that off? There you go. Uh, I'm gonna take the key off. I guess there's no opening in there. So you get that chisel that you had? Yeah. So then you put the chisel just right in there, and you hold it kind of at an angle like that, and then just tap. There you go. Yeah, careful, careful. You don't yeah. want to drive, yeah. see you're driving it into that. Okay. Yeah. So now um, that little screwdriver that Grant had might be helpful. Yeah, this thing right here comes in handy. So this is called a wood grip key. Oh, here. Do, oh, go ahead. Yeah, you go, might be able to tap that, that and get that in there. Can you give me the wall? Uh, pry it. No, don't tap. Just pry. Nope, nope maybe not. May not tap it. Yeah, that's a good angle. That should take it out. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we're going to put this with the cover. It did have a, it did have it a, did have a place. We're going to take it out anyway. Okay, so then I take this tensioner off. Is that half? Oh, we gotta get those out. Oh. Yep. I was over in the park stuff and I found brand new chain and a whole bunch of brand new stuff. Ooh. Yeah, going straight in, Brooks, so you don't cut it off. All this stuff is available through Abington Spares or Morse Motors, which Abington Spares is. Uh, they. From my understanding, is a Moss Motors distributor at this point because they were doing all the T series stuff uh, and then got Which into one? the B stuff. Um, this one. Oh, wait a minute. That's uh, no, not I'm a, sorry. No. 760. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're going to have to pull all this off. That's why I decided to pull this stuff off because you won't be able to get the crank out anyway. You give me the greasy, so is oily... the can going to come with that plate, or does the can come through that plate? Um, it looks like because there's bolts. There are... Oh! Grab that. There are bolts in behind the cam gear, so I might have to take the gear off to get more... Bolts. Well, we're going to... Yeah, we'll take that all off. All right. Yeah, because it's... Okay, yeah, so there's a retention plate behind there. That has bolts, so yeah, you gotta take the can here off. So you need your chisel and your, and your hammer again, rookie, to, yeah. do the, to do the locking tab. It's kind of like a disposable. They work hard, you know, the first yeah. time they're pulled. So, yep. So this. Now you got from three eighths all the way to three quarter inch. Yeah. It's not gonna fall on my toes, though. It will. Just hang on to it. Yeah. No, that all that stuff's worn, but it's old. That stuff's quite old. Go for it. Ready? Ah! Oh, yeah. You gotta hold in firmly. Hey, it did do it. Yep. Look at that. Oh. Even though you had the stack up of stack ups. All uh, right, now, Brookie, you can slide that timing set off. Yeah, you're gonna have to go. Uh, this has got a key in it, so. Oh, yeah, see, it comes yeah. off pretty good. Might have to have a little bit of trouble getting that off. Let me go take care of this.
What are we going to cut it with? It's vague made for a home do-it-yourself. That that's vague vague instructions for the home do it your shade tree that's mechanic. The opposite of that one. <laughs> All right, so we're taking vague a big cutter vague. thingy, meaning they don't need that that good of information. <laughs> if that makes and any we're sense this at all. Chain. Because yeah, we're gonna replace it anyway. All right, cutter. <laughs> Right. Yep. There you go. Plunk this. Okay. Hey, 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 now. Gentle. Just gonna slice and dice. Yeah, we wouldn't use this stuff over, bro. Especially if we turn this thing up. Uh, these, we're going to take this plate off. One, two, three. Yeah, and probably going to have to take these off too, but go ahead. Okay. Right here? Yeah, you want to hold on to one side while you knock it. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Yep. There you go. Okay. There you go. So that gear can stay on there until the crank, crank comes out. We gotta leave that in. there because remember the distributor? We were talking about there's a drive that um, there's a drive that goes sideways through the block here to that. Alright, it's splashy. It's gonna be water coming out everywhere. Yeah, if you want to hold that to make sure we get it all I don't like messes on my floor. Oh, a nice combination of... You know what? Oh. Oh! The, um... That's not very deep right there. I was thinking that was deeper, and so we were looking at just a little bit of coolant. Yeah. Coming all the way over. Yep. There it is. And we'll put the pin back in here, just so we don't have any hexidents. It's bleeding. Now, Brock, well, zip, you give me zip. one of the really nasty. Oh, you're going to get that? Yeah. You can zip that the oil pan off. Yep, I'm going to take the oil pan off, Brock, which is going to okay. be the nastiest part oh, of it. Yep. Yeah. We're going to take this guy off right here. Oh, my goodness. It's got a dent in the oil pan. <gasps> After all those years, it's got a dent in the oil pan? How could that be? These things were never used to run across fields and stuff. Yeah, I know people that drove these things like they were some high-performance race car, and they were used hard, too. There were so many of these. And taken care of, you could wind the living daylights out of these things. It's um, 7 16th all the way around. It is. Yeah, that one right there might be easier. Now you don't want to bend up the pan rail, but so you just be, yep, try tapping that guy in there. Like this? Yep. Yep, and then see, it just broke loose. So can so I? Pry it a little bit. Yep. There you go. Now work your way around to break the gasket yeah. loose all the way around. Yeah, because you don't want to bend the flange. Yeah, you bend the, you bend the oil pan rail and you'll be... No, you won't. You won't need to drive it. You just stick it in. No, you just stick so it in there. Stick it in over yeah. here. I'll hold it up. 
and then just pry up and you work yep. your way around just prying it a little bit yep. there you go bit. i'll hold on to it and there you go Ooh, look at that let's see how nasty that is um it got some very gritty stuff in there oh no yeah it's like sand oh yeah, yeah. there's our there's our we're right up against our oil pump drive with the camshaft. Yeah. Yep. So okay, so let's take this. So what's this part right here? That's the that's the oil pickup screen. So that screen there. So if this thing, let's say you put the nut and wash it down in the engine, yep. this would prevent it from getting sucked up into the pump gears and destroying the pump gears. Because there'll be a couple of gears that mesh together that actually pump the oil, suck it from here, and then pump it through all of the different oil passages. So you'll have oil passages at the main bearings, yep. you'll have oil passages through the crankshaft to the air connecting rod bearings, the big yep. end of the bearing. And then in the camshaft on every one of these journals here, these are the journals in there, yep. you'll have oil pumps there. And then there's oil pumped up through with the camshaft, through the lifters, through the push rods, and down over the rock rungs. But this isn't all caked up. Nope, there's not a bunch oh, of splits oh, but in there. there is so there is, um, oh, there is some stuff. Some oh, there is stuff. some gritty stuff. Yeah. Which could be gasket material, you know. Anything. So we're, we're going to take off these two 716s right now, so you need the little one there. And I believe that will be... Um, uh, or does that... No, that holds the pump together. you got to take these off. Four half-inch ones. Three half-inch ones. Half-inch. Yep. I think it's already in the... Yep. That will pull the pump out. The other two hold the pump layers together, um, which we can take that apart and look at it sometime. No, no, this one. These two hold four. the pump. I, I know, I, I didn't mean four, I meant three. Kay. Those hold the pump layers together because it's in segments. Now, if you want, you can try to wiggle that out of there. It should come out, screen and all. What am I with one? This thing? Yep. 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 I need your bonker. Yeah. I need it. Oh, ew. <laughs> Where's your rag? You should have one. I have a pocket. little rag. That's not big enough. <laughs> All right. I need yep. bonker. Yeah. Just. What am I bonking? Just uh, tap up if you can hit. Yeah. Gentle. Little. Yeah. I think it. I think it moved. It did move. <laughs> Do you need to take it? <laughs> Let me get something to. I think you still need to take. It. Just see if I can find something to pry a cake. Anything here to grab? Yeah, right here. Well, maybe not. I know that's what it is. You just. Oh, here we go. There, there go. we go. Take, take that off, bro. How? You gotta grab yeah, you side. can't yep. pull sideways. Yep. Yeah, get rid right of. There, there you go. go. There's the pump drive right there. Yep. Whoop. Oh, Which also oh. drives the distributor. We're gonna take this and put it down here and let it drain. That's yep. nice stuff yep. right yep. there. Yeah. So that's that's the. I'm gonna get a rag. <laughs> And when you come back, I will show you. We can take that. Oh, yeah, we can get the cam shaft back. Right. Okay, but don't go yet far. Uh, pull it that way a little bit. Well, so pull it so that. So we can see that. You can see the gear right there. Yeah, it's but running. pull it that way. Okay, see that gear, bro? Yeah. That meshes with the gear on the oil pump. Yeah. And, and it goes down through. And, and that turns the oil pump. And it meshes with this distributor drive. There's a gear right in the side. Yep. That drives the distributor, and the oil pump is down in there. So this is actually, this is different than like your American V8 where the distributor would drive off the camshaft okay. and then also drive the oil pump. This has two separate drives. They're independently the driven, but on the same there. gear on the cam. Yeah, we're just going to... Oh, okay. So what are we doing? 
Now I'm going to pull that flange off there so the drive for the distributor will drop out. There we go. Oh, she's got it, I guess. There it is. There's, There's the, the other drive. drive. See? See that slot, Brooke? That now. goes. There I have, Brooke. That goes in there like that. That was driven by that. See? Okay. So now the question being, oh, so here's the thing. If you take out that drive, does that mean oil is just going to be, so like we're not putting that drive back oh, in yeah. to have, um, to do the crank timing with a crank position. We're going to have to look at that. So we got to figure out what, how the oiling system works in this engine. To make sure that you don't eliminate something that is going to create a problem later on. I'm so gonna that turn, cam's fine. That I'm going to turn this fine. to Jude Rook. Back up a second. Yeah. That load seems fine. That one seems fine. That one seems fine. We got plenty of extra parts, so. That one's delaminating. That one is bad. Let me see. That one right there. Oh, right yeah. On the, That's right coming on the tip. apart. That yeah. Cam is Probably way been like that for there. who knows how long. Yeah. But it's all right. We got uh, okay. tons of spare parts. We need so. a new bumpy. Who knows? Oh, maybe. wait a minute. You know. Maybe that means. We need a a different better hand hand shaft. shaft. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, we need you uh, mean <laughs> something with an R in front of it, like race <laughs> or a mile street. Yes. Yeah. All right, we do pistons, uh, bro. Okay. All right, that one looks pretty good too. Yep. 
just normal wear and tear okay same thing Brooke we're going all the way down through <clears throat> if I could reach it no, I'm gonna have to do it this way I guess Yeah, we're bound up now. Hang on. Can you turn that? There you go. You got it. You know, it's just wear and tear. That's not bad, really. Well, we'll measure. Yeah. And this one says... 84. 84. <laughs> and the bearing is not bad. Not bad at all. So, okay, we're going to put this back together. And how does it go together? Oh, thanks. Got to match up the little tabs on the... Those are the things that hold the bearing in place so it doesn't spin, is what that amounts to. Yeah, and set it over there at the further end, because this is number four, right? So it gets turned. Can you turn it, bro? That way right there. You got it. You got to put that cap back on there with a... Is that oily? Yeah, it's a rag. <laughs> this is a newer, you know, a 67 and above was five main, five. which this is a yeah. good... One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going to do this so again. That one. Now stop. Hold your hat. Rotate. Oh, rotate it down rotate and rotate it, yeah, push to push it down. All the way down. Yeah, and then hit it, sure, and that makes sense. Straight down without the, yeah, without okay. the fiddly around with the whacking. Well, they can't get that down in there, but this is all right. Just tap it gently. Oh, got it. Excellent. I probably would have thought of that eventually, but... You know how it is. <laughs> Spins free, don't it? Uh, yep. Screw that ring. Yeah. Oh, you want to check in play? Yeah, I was just curious. Just for the heck of it? Yeah. Boy, oh, that's good. Yeah, see, that, that right there, I believe, is a cut for balancing. I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, no, it's like a I don't Let's know. look at this I while we got this it. This thing looks like it's, uh, it's just odd. E right there for some reason. So this is the crank that those gentlemen with the the car that they goes to Lime Rock was talking about because this has been flat. Oh yeah. It's been it's been uh, machined flat. So this crank is lighter than some of the other cranks that right. would have been in these engines. Uh huh. And the lighter crank is better because it will the engine will turn up faster. Yeah. Just yeah. imagine if you weighed a hundred pounds more, could you you couldn't yeah. run as you couldn't like sprint as fast as you, you want to go look at something? Carry you the yeah, sure. with you. That crank that came out of the the engine that was blown is right out back. Okay, yes. Yeah, so Let's go look at it and see if it looks like this. Same year. <clears throat> And I got the other, there's another camshaft right there, but I don't believe there's a crankshaft. Yes, there is. There's a crankshaft in this block. Let's get rid of this overdrive. Oh. Got way too much stuff in here. So this one, yeah, had clean. And look at these pistons. But it's got a ridge on it, though. Yeah. But there's one lifter, and there's a camshaft. This is an 1800. Uh, and it's the same about the same year because it, okay. those are the numbers that I was right same numbers I was telling or showing Brooke. Well, we'll measure up that one, and if it's got issues, we can take this the rest of the way down and measure this one up. Yeah, and see, it's got I don't know, but these pistons. Those interest I think me. are. Um, Is it because of the valves? No, I think those are for the valves. Yeah. Let's just for the heck of it, we can tip this down. 
Because, look, <laughs> yes, that's right. They're for the valve. They're for, I think, the intake valve. Because these two have shear the center port right here. Yep. Uh, sorry, they're for the exhaust valve. This is the center exhaust valve. The exhaust valves on these are on the outside. Yep. So that's a relief for the. I'll hold it. See what that crank looks like. The crank's in there, right? Yeah, I know that it is. That crank is also flat ground. It is, it's okay. It's a flat machine. Yep, okay. Like I said, there's a camshaft in this too. Yeah. This is not the damaged engine because the block on the damaged engine wasn't any good. It got heaved. So we won't bother to go outside and look at that other one. Nope. No need to. But that stuff out of that block, I'm not sure. You know the maroon one that had the hard top on it that we got down in Gardner? Yep. That's the block for that, I believe. Oh. And that's a 1968, I think. Okay. So we'll have to look at that. Now, Brooke, it's the mains. Yep. You got to put the Ogadogas on these collars. The what? The Ogadogas. Go, 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 go. You're going to have to use the heavy duty yeah, stuff. Use the air cat. Probably the. Aww. I don't know what those would be torqued at, but. Torqued at. All the goodness. Can I opt out? You want me to do it? Yeah. I'll do it. I'll opt out. Dad gets to play for a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Ah. Well, that wasn't bad. Well, those are all the same ones. Yep. Ah. That'll be the guy. You say I got slide him, you can go right straight up on it if you want. I think that's how these have to come out, yeah. Slide him, yeah. I think so. So the kind of the neat thing about this engine, which I didn't realize, is the head is already studded. And the crank is also already studded. Whereas a lot of engines would be, uh, would be bolts, um, which studs can offer... Studs, studs can offer some superior strength um, compared to bolts. Gotcha. Because of the clamping force that they can put on, which is debatable. But it is uh, pretty standard. People will yeah. use studs over. I'm a little bit nervous about the little hook being like this. Well, isn't this fine thread? Half inch. Oh yeah, right. it's the exact right. right size right here. It's right in the tools right here. I'm too busy just trying to get it out right of the block. Right here. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Well, that's way better. That's way better. Yeah. Way good. Ready? Oh man, that's exactly how you're. Oh. Yeah, I forgot about the end of that. I'm not used to working. <laughs> yeah, that, doesn't this remind you of um, Chrysler products where they had the mains, they had the, the, the main bolts going down through, but they also had, a, had them coming in through the outside of the wall. Yeah, yeah, so that's like, um, oh, what do they call that? Um, so my, my Mazda engine for my car, um, that's how that one is. Isn't that how the Porsche is though? Cause it's yeah. the girdle. Isn't the 944, he's got the main bolts down through and the studs through the side for the yeah. girdle. No, that's how that one is. It's, it's multiple. It's got the two mains and then it's got a series around the outside and then it's another series around the outside of that but which nothing is across, yeah, like nothing which across. that's how an l so an ls is like that too yeah well, yeah i think the main bearing is pretty good yeah and you're lining them up over here yeah i forgot about that so i didn't know that anything but that works that pretty good you just pick tool pick those out we're going to out of where? Take the bearing shell. Yeah, so we're going to take this. We're going to go right down in here like this. And there's your, th remember Forrest or your, your dad was just taking the crankshaft and pushing it back and forth. 
Well, that's what these are right here. These are the thrust washers. Well, rainbows. This is the um, lateral thrust shims or bearings. This one here looks, um, it's got some. That one's right to the babbit. Yeah. So see that, see that uh, kind of bronze color, Brooke? Yeah. That's called the Babbitt. So that's the that's the CYA. That's the save your you know what. Yeah. So when this when the when the uh, top material, which is the this is the material that's supposed to run on, when you have a uh, engine that gets worn beyond what it's supposed to, uh -huh. the Babbitt keeps from ruin is there to ru keep from ruining the crank, which is the hard, the expensive part. The bearings are cheap, the crank's expensive. Uh, if you catch it in time. If you catch it in time, yeah. You but you should see lower oil pressure, or you should hear some knocking yeah, or something. Um, yeah. So you, you'll hear, you'll hear like uh, you'll have lower oil pressure would tell you you got bearing issues or something like that, or you know, if you get so far as to have a rod knock, um, which typically it's too late at that point. But the main thing is, oh look, I just spun that, and that spun it spun the lower one. Yeah, these are in halves like this down in there, and it spun both of them right back up. The main thing, if you've got low oil pressure at idle, chances are it's main bearings because that's the biggest cons consumption of oil. Let's say as far as oiling an engine, um, a lot of times when the oil pressure drops down when you're idling. Um, you've got main bearings that have worn to the point where it's not maintaining oil pressure volume, volume and oil pressure. We don't even need to look at these and line these up to you. That one right there too, same thing. Let's get down to the habit. But, but not really, like, there's not a lot of, like, a it's trash. It's severe, yeah. yeah. It's not like trash went through yeah. it and it's not hammered, because usually what you'd see is if it were if it were quote unquote, hammered like the engine was loose or it was it was um, it was run kind of hard you'll see the marks right vertical with the piston where the load is is the most right here or up a little bit because that's when the combustion happens and it puts the load on it you'll see that in the rods too all right let's... Um, yeah, let's pull this crankshaft real quick. Ready? Shaft. There we go. Main journal. Journal. I see. Crank pin journal. One eight. So you know, see, there's the there's the the low and the high. This is if it was new. And this is the main journal. The low and the high. So let's just see what there is. You can run it right down, all the way down on the flats. What is it? I got one eight seven five. What do you have there? One eight seven five. Oh my word! One eight seven five five. Let's try another one here. Staying away from the oiling holes, of course. See, you can run that all the way down flat to make sure you're square. Yeah. Because the flat, yeah. Trouble is, I have to pull it off, and I don't like. I have to be careful. I don't pick up the hole. One eight seven four. <laughs> Little bit under by a one eight seven four ten thousandths under eight seven four even. Um, so there, <coughs> this is a good reference. Go ahead, for us. Yeah. So what I like to do, Rookie, is I'll yeah. come in here, and so I can see it while I'm measuring. 
Yeah. And I bring Definitely. it right in so I touch and I'm square and I hold the inside bits. So we're 1870. 1870. We have 187. Yeah, so we're under by, by six thousandths. A solid six thousandths on there. So that, that's undersized. With with this, I mean, we can get a regular. Yeah, we don't know 600. about outer roundness either. Well, give me your, um, you got your, your one to two mic? Yep. I've had these for 50 years. And they're still. Yeah, it's a brown and chart. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So these are made at, yeah, these are made in Rhode Island. It's Kingston, yeah. Rhode Island. They're still made in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, so we'll, well. What we'll eventually do the next time we do this, Brooke, we're going to measure everything out and record it and then decide what to do. Which way to go? So you always gotta wipe your tips off. There's no schmoo on there. I much rather use the micrometer than that vernier caliper. Well, the micrometer gets you down in the. Tent. The vernier caliper gives you a rough idea, as far as I'm concerned. But well, so this, the accuracy of this versus that is inherently better oh, yeah. in the in the mic. Yeah. Of course, nowadays they've got all digital. Oh no, we st we still at the shop. We still do use, you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. no kidding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's it's still you know the the accuracy of this should be in the manual, but that's probably give or take a thousandth. Yeah. And or maybe maybe a half, but that's yeah. probably questionable. So this will be tenths of a thousandth in there. So yeah. we're. Um, so our eight seven five plus one. Eight seven six. So eight seven six, and then we got to look for the line that lines up the best. Yeah, let me write it down when you say it. Which I would say is the nine. So eight seven six nine. Man, round it off. That's eight seven seven. So if you bring it down to a thousandths instead of ten thousandths. No, oh, hold on. Yeah, that is a seven six eight seven six nine. Man, oh man, that is. So it's, and that's that's the high end for us. Eight seven six four is the high side. The bottom side is eight seven five so nine. It's, um, so it's saying that we're four or sorry five tenths. So it's a nine, right? Yeah. So we're five yeah. tenths over. We're within tolerance of a new crankshaft at, at, on that one journal, anyway. You see, this, this what you're reading here, Brooke, is if this oh, crank... Oh, you know what? I'm measuring... No, I'm measuring the... This is what the crankshaft would be when it was brand new, when it was put in the car. Yeah. So these measurements that we're taking, um, if we're in between these two, that means that we can have that crankshaft polished, not turned. They're not going to take off material. They're mm -hmm. going to polish it so it's even, okay? And if there's any scars, they're going to polish it and take those things out. And then we can put what they call a standard set of bearings in it, which are like it was from the factory. What are we going to be doing the next time? We're going to be doing all the measuring. All the measuring, yeah. Yeah, we're going to check all the journals. We're going to check pistons. We're going to check bores, meaning this to make sure that the bores are within tolerance of the pistons and stuff so you can have the right clearance. Clearance? Clearance, clearance. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that will be the next project. So we'll find out how much of this we have to go find yeah. other bits about the property to replace yeah. with something that will work. And yeah. what we need, we'll go through the NOS assortment that stores, yeah. Fifty year old collection of MG there are, packs. There are quite a few of these here at the late start racing headquarters. So headquarters. Quite a few engines and cars in these particular um, yes. that Gramp has been collecting for fifty years and No, more than fifty years. No, I think it's fifty years. It's it's, it? it's actually nineteen seventy four uh, an MG, a British Leyland dealership back in 1974 when I was buying MGA parts. 
the story is I walked into the pot room and the guy I was dealing with, his name was Frank. He just right off out of the clear blue skies, Paul, you want to buy all this, uh, all this inventory? And I, w I, I didn't know what to say at first. And he says, uh, they want $500 for it. And I said, yeah, I'll buy that. <laughs> and it was, <sighs> some of it is completely obsolete. Never find it. A lot of it is uh, anything you can imagine. Rover, MGB, MGA, TC, TF, uh, 1200, 1500, 1600, 1800, uh, just everything. And maybe we'll do, when we get ready to look for parts, we'll do a video just going through all that stuff, looking for what we need, which will be fun. Well, what I was getting at is the car. <clears throat> You've been collecting the MGs for 50, 50 years. years, yeah. So it's not just that you bought those NOS parts. It's that oh, yeah. physically more of these vehicles around this property right. that we can get stuff from. But you haven't actually done anything with no. <laughs> these for... This is the first one in a long time. Other than the TF. TC. TC, sorry. TC, TC. right. You did a motor in TC. But other than that, yeah. B, you haven't done a motor since. I've taken them apart and repaired certain things in them. But as far as doing an overall, it would just be an MGA that I've just done. Just an MGA. 1500, yeah. yeah. And the last B you actually worked on was the Maroon B. Yeah, Back but I didn't get in the engine. Before that was a 1972 MGB that I had the engine out of and did work on. Oh. But that would be 72, so we were talking about the same thing. The but guy that bought that, drove that, he had over 200,000 miles on that engine. Yeah. But as far as a B, working on a B, this being Brooks, you know, and 1970 MGB GT project car, you haven't worked on an MGB since the Maroon one, which would have been 1997 and 8-ish. Might have been. 90, 98, yeah, 99, maybe. 2000 or so. I remember driving yeah. it in high school. Oh, yeah. That's so holy cats. That's like been a while. 97, 98, 2000. Yep, which was, I did that a, was a body resto. I did a quick restoration. restoration yep. on it, but the engine and stuff ran in that one. We good. didn't even bother with it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been, that's 20, call it 25 years since you yeah. worked on a, uh, yep. a B at all. Yep. So, so this will be fun. Yeah, but, it is. I've been looking forward to this, yep. to get started on this. Especially all three of us. I mean, pretty cool. So what do you think after today? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. <laughs> what a plan. Well, you know what yeah, dirty oil dirty. is. <laughs> you know what dinosaurs look like in liquid form. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm going to clean my nails after this. Yes. All right. Well, uh, thanks, for, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, Again, this is part one of Brooks 1970 MGB GT project, uh, car. project car, project car, which is three season driving and also land speed land racer. Speed car. So well, one of the three when we finally get them all done. So the the the, it, um, the plan is we each will have a car to take to Lauren to go land speed racing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grant's car. He's already got record. We'll work on that again this winter, too. You're going to see build videos on that. And then I also have a car, but I have to finish a garage at our house. We'll call it the Late Start Racing Annex um, <laughs> that I have to finish before I can put my car in there and work on mine. Um, they're all very different from each other. We'll they are. That that's, you know, that's the fun part, they're the part pretty, I like about they're it. They're fairly diverse yep. Um, yep. in the difference between them. So Yeah, they certainly are. Certainly are. Yep. All right, well. Until next time. See ya. <laughs> what did you say last time? <laughs> you said, See you around like a donut? See you around like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Graham. I'm <laughs> You guys. <laughs> Are you picking on me again? <laughs> <laughs>